Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera where it's an absolutely beautiful April day outside. I just got back from doing some cycling around Yoyogi Park and out around the Shibuya area. Uh, it's kind of windy today but I managed to get in about 40 kilometers and I had a good time out on my ride. Uh, cycling is what I do to uh, keep myself more or less in shape uh, both physically and mentally. It's something which I've been doing since my early teens. I really love cycling. And when I sold everything before moving to Japan, one thing I didn't sell and which I brought with me was my bicycle. Of course, since I've come here, I've gotten a, a couple of uh, different bikes, but uh, uh, the bike itself doesn't matter so long as you get out and ride on it. And if you're looking for uh, a good way to uh, get around, to uh, enjoy fresh air and nature and get fit at the same time, uh, I really recommend cycling. Uh, the reason I'm riding so much now is I'm hoping to do some uh, bikepacking trips uh, later in the year and during the summer. And uh, as I don't want to do work that much harder then, I figure I'll go ahead and put in some miles now to get myself in decent shape. And you know, the harder I work now, the less hard I'll have to work when I'm out bikepacking. Uh, I do have a cycling channel, and if you're interested in cycling, I'll post a link to my uh, cycling channel in the description below the video. So let's go ahead and get started with the subject of today's video and this is going to be something which I have talked about before in previous videos but it's been a couple of years, two or three years since I last brought up this topic and I do get people uh, uh, sending uh, comments to the comment section asking this question and that is uh, what are the differences between a rangefinder camera and an SLR camera and which design do I recommend? So. Uh, I can't really recommend one design over the other, but I can give you information about each design, and hopefully with this information, it can help you make an informed decision. My dog is snoring over there, so if you hear any kind of funny noise in the background, that's just him sleeping on the sofa. So uh, my guinea pigs for uh, this video are going to be the Canonet QL17 and uh, uh, the Canon AE1. This is probably the most well-known of the Canon rangefinder cameras and was produced up into the 1970s. And of course the AE one was also introduced in the 1970s. Uh, these cameras were both available in camera stores at the same time, so I thought that these would make a good, I guess, comparison. And, uh, and both of them have the, the features which uh, you know, make each camera design unique. Uh, there are lots of different rangefinder cameras on the market, uh, some really modern ones with lots of bells and whistles and some which are much more simple. This one is kind of a good middle ground which uh, has a number of, uh, I guess, the most important features which most people would want in a rangefinder camera. And of course the, uh, the AE-1, this camera is kind of a legend. Uh, people have always loved this camera and it continues to be popular even today. Both these cameras still get a pretty good price if you find one in good condition and the price point is kind of similar. Uh, the Canon QL17 is a real favorite with the street and candid photographers and the AE1 is just a, a good all-around camera which you can fit a large amount of lenses too. So uh, one of the first things which people uh, talk about when it comes to comparing a rangefinder camera to an SLR camera is the size. And in the case of the Canon QL17, uh, this is a more compact camera than uh, you know, the Canon AE1. But uh, there are different versions of the QL17, and the first version of the QL17 was a larger camera. You can usually spot the, the, the larger or older version right away because it has a, a flash sync socket here on the front. Uh, if it doesn't have the flash sync socket and is a smaller camera, it's going to be a new Canonet or G3. And quickly, uh, some people will ask me what's the difference between uh, the new Canonet and the Canonet uh, uh, G3. There's basically no difference other than it has a G3 emblem on the G3 version and the G3 uses more plastic in the construction and the new Canonet, the slightly earlier version, uh, is all metal. Uh, everything else is identical in the camera and the parts interchange between the two, uh, even the lenses. So no difference between the different models. So. <clears throat> uh, and the Canonet, of course, uh, dates back to the 1950s, and the first Canonet cameras were heavy, much heavier than an AE-1. And the first version of the Canonet QL-17 is actually a larger and heavier camera than the Canon AE-1. 
So uh, the most obvious difference between these cameras is, of course, the, the viewfinder design. The SLR or single lens reflex design allows you to see through the viewfinder what the lens is seeing, whereas in the rangefinder camera, you're looking through a separate viewfinder and it's giving you a representation of what the lens is seeing. And um, some cameras do this better than others. The Canon at QL17 does a pretty good job of showing through the viewfinder what the lens is looking at. Uh, this, when we look, when we discuss the the, uh, the benefits and consequences of the viewfinder design, uh, this brings up another issue, which some people say makes the uh, rangefinder camera superior to the SLR camera, and uh, that is the placement of the lens. If you'll notice on the Canon at QL17, the lens sits very closely to the body of the camera and more close to the film plane, whereas the lens on the SLR camera sits farther away. And this is due, of course, to the design of the SLR uh, system. You need a, a reflex mirror, which sits at a 45 degree angle behind the lens. <clears throat> and that projects what comes through the lens into the glass pentaprism. And from the pentaprism, the image is projected through the eyepiece and you can look at it. And the benefit to this system is that you see exactly what the lens is seeing, or more or less exactly, because most SLR cameras don't actually give you a 100% field of view, and certainly not more than 100%. So uh, you know, take that with a grain of salt. It's, it's quite possible that uh, more will be on your photograph than what you're actually seeing through the lens. But uh, it's a, a very convenient way of accurately uh, composing and focusing an image and also allows you to quickly focus on other parts of the image uh, you know, very precisely. Uh, the rangefinder camera, on the other hand, um, it doesn't have that system. Uh, so uh, you know, it's a little bit more difficult to uh, focus precisely. But uh, the good thing about cameras is that they are kind of designed with that in mind. They have enough depth of field in the design of the lens where uh, small errors in focus aren't going to show up on the film. Uh, the main benefit of the rangefinder over the SLR design is the placement of the lens because in order to fit the mirror box and the prism and all that stuff, the lens has to be moved further away and has to be made a retro focus design. So rather than uh, focusing the image directly from the lens onto the film plane, uh, the, it has to go travel a, a further distance and has to be reversed and projected onto the film plane. And the farther the lens is away from the film plane, the more other variables can play an influence. For example, a hot or cold weather can cause the, the metal in, in the, the design of the body to, of the camera to expand or contract and, and affect precise focus. Um, this isn't an issue which I've ever actually experienced and you know, I, I don't think it's a genuine issue, but uh, it, it's, it's an issue uh, which uh, people discuss and, uh, uh, and you know, I guess for some people it, it's, it's an important point. And uh, uh, the rangefinder system, uh, it, it's just a, the lens placement is simpler and uh, in the early SLR cameras, when they hadn't been able to make retrofocus cam lenses for, you know, especially the wider angles, the mirror had to be moved up in a special lens, which put the rear element almost on the film itself, almost touching the shutter curtains. That was what was kind of required. But the design of the lens, these lenses with the extended elements and stuff like that made them quite slow. And uh, when technology was able to improve a little bit, they were able to make uh, retrofocus wide angle lenses. Uh, of course, they've never, you know, there are possible, there are retrofocus lenses made for rangefinder cameras, and those tend to be the telephoto lenses because, you know, they're set kind of far away and from the film plane, and also uh, uh, some of the interchangeable lens rangefinder cameras were uh, convertible to SLR cameras, and what they did is they stuck a mirror box on the front of the rangefinder camera, and you put a special lens on the front of that mirror box, and that allowed you to turn your old rangefinder camera into an SLR camera. And this is something which you see on the old uh, Leica M series, and uh, some of the Canon net or Canon cameras, the early Canon 7 uh, uh, camera, had this available as an option as well. I kind of scratched my head at the, you know about that because. Uh, Canon had at least two real SLR cameras on the market at the time, and I wondered why they went to all the trouble with the Canon 7 to, to uh, make a, an SLR kit for it. But anyway, they did. So, uh, so that's an important point to the design is the, the placement of the lens in the camera. Because this is not a retrofocus lens, uh, the camera can have the lens placed closer, and uh, whether that makes a difference in the quality of the image is probably 
not a big deal, but it does make the camera <clears throat> more compact and easier to put in your pocket, which is probably more important to most people. Uh, <clears throat> another issue which comes up is the the sound of the camera. So uh, rangefinder cameras have a reputation as being uh, quiet cameras. And we'll go ahead and listen. And it's a fairly quiet sound. And this camera here, if it were just the shutter itself, it would be a very quiet camera. But there are a couple of other things you have to listen to. And may, you know, besides the uh, somewhat noisier film transport, there's also the reflex mirror moving up and down, which makes an additional sound when you're operating the camera. So between uh, the AE-1 and the Canonet, uh, the Canonet is a much quieter camera. Uh, the sound is uh, another, you know, is a big issue for some people. For people who are street photographers or can candid photographers, they don't want an uh, uh, issue with, uh, like, I guess, people hearing the camera when it's being used. And of course, the, the a lot of the newer, larger pro style SLR cameras are even louder than the AE1. The AE1 is not an especially loud camera. Uh, noise is something which people think about. Another disadvantage which some people claim that the SLR camera has is the additional motion of the reflex mirror because it has to move up and down and uh, up and down moving parts inside the camera can cause the camera to vibrate or move a little bit and affect the sharpness of the image. And um, I can't honestly say that I've ever had a problem with this and that's even shooting the really big SLR camera, the, the Pentax uh, 67 which has a really large mirror and really large shutter curtains. I've often heard, you know, it, it comes with a feature, the later ones, a mirror lockup to prevent the vibration from the mirror from affecting images. Uh, I've never noticed that, but then again, uh, you know, I guess maybe it's the shutter speeds I use or what I photograph, I haven't had an issue with that. And I've also not had an issue with the Hasselblad cameras. I find that uh, uh, the reflex mirror hasn't given me any issues and I don't notice a, uh, a I guess, a. Uh, inferior image quality over uh, other camera designs which don't have a reflex mirror. And um, the, the additional weight of the SLR camera tends to absorb uh, whatever, I guess, momentum or motion is created by the, the reflex mirror system. So um, I, I don't really see that as a real issue for, for you know, mortal human beings, uh, you know, the, the effect of the, the mirror slap on image quality. Uh, a lot of people will think after hearing that you know you can see everything through the lens that uh, you know through the viewfinder which the lens is showing that that would be a definite advantage over uh, the SLR camera compared to the rangefinder camera, but that's not necessarily so. Uh, one good thing about the rangefinder cameras is that they are more accurate in focusing in certain certain uh, lighting situations. <clears throat> An issue which uh, uh, SLR cameras have is different designs in the focusing screens. And some of these uh, uh, focusing screens require a fair amount of light to work well. And they have things like um, split prisms or split image things or uh, uh, prism patterns in the focusing screen. And these are very difficult to see if there is an adequate light, especially if you're shooting a, a lens like this, which just has a maximum aperture of f2.8. And other lenses, wide angle lenses, only go as fast as f3.5. And the, the larger the number, the larger the f number, the less light goes through the lens and the less light there is to use when you're trying to focus and compose. And uh, in, in old cameras where you had to stop down for metering, uh, this was an especially a problem. You know, it, it required a couple of additional steps. You, know, you, you have to stop down the camera to get the, the light meter reading. Then you have to open the aperture for focusing and composing. And that made it not, very, uh, not a very convenient system. Uh, in the case of the, the Canonet, uh, you see the same amount of light through the viewfinder at all times, regardless of what, how you have the aperture set on the lens. Uh, it's a large and bright viewfinder and very simple to use. Uh, when you look through the viewfinder of the AE-1, you see what the lens is seeing for the most part, maybe 90% of what the lens is seeing. Uh, in the case of the Canonet, you're going to see, be seeing more than 100% of what the lens is seeing. <clears throat> because uh, you'll see the, the frame lines, uh, which are supposed to be the limits of what will be projected on the film, but you can actually see outside of those. 
And this gives you kind of an advantage if you uh, have the camera set up and you're like, you know, you're doing, uh, you're taking photographs of moving things and you're watching things move into the scene. Uh, you can actually see the things move into the field of view of the lens before it actually gets there, still looking through the, the viewfinder. Whereas in the SLR camera, you kind of have to uh, watch more carefully. So there's an advantage to that. And also uh, in shooting it in low light, uh, especially if you're shooting night scenes you know, in the dark, uh, and you can use things like uh, uh, lit up signs or reflections off of glass or things like that, or light points, which you can use to help uh, use the rangefinder system to focus. So a lot of people like rangefinder cameras because they, they think, they believe, or at least in their experience, they are more suitable for shooting in situations where it's dark outside. Uh, one advantage to most rangefinder cameras is that they are mechanical, uh, and the QL17 is also a fully mechanical camera. The AE1 is not a mechanical camera. It requires batteries to operate. Uh, however, there are many... Uh, uh, rangefinder cameras which do require uh, batteries to operate cameras like the uh, uh, see some of the uh, Hymatic cameras Minolta Hymatics or Yashica Electro 35s or things like that <clears throat> these have electronically controlled shutters and uh, They won't work unless uh, you have a battery inside the camera They have usually a default shutter speed setting in the case of the Yashica something like a uh, uh, one two hundred and fiftieth of a second. So if you're shooting in the daylight, you can actually get away with shooting the camera if, if you don't have a battery in it. But it's not so easy to do. And in cameras like the Minolta High, you know the the Hymatic E, not not the earlier Hymax, but the the like the later versions, uh, those simply won't work unless there's a battery uh, installed in them. And uh, uh, some. A lot of people who choose rangefinder cameras, they'll choose something like the Canon Q QL17 because they want the fully mechanical system with it. The odd thing about the QL17 is though it, it does have a light meter in it, you cannot use the light meter when you are shooting in the manual mode. It's kind of a quirk to this camera. Uh, it will only work when you have the camera set to the automatic mode. So you have to set it to the A mode or to one of the flash modes here. And it, it's kind of quirky because uh, if you're going to use the built-in light meter in the camera, you have to put it in the automatic position to either uh, take the, the light reading or you just have to operate it in the automatic position. And it's a shutter priority automatic camera. It takes a little bit of uh, getting used to to use. It's a good system once you figure it out. Canon really loved and recommended the uh, uh, shutter priority system. Uh, the automatic system in the Canon AE-1 was also shutter priority, but then later cameras and other variations gave the advantage, you know, option of choosing uh, aperture priority or shutter priority, or of course, uh, where I like to use just full manual operation. So uh, I think that's about it. I think I've covered most of the differences between the SLR and rangefinder camera. And uh, uh, if I haven't, if I've forgotten something, feel free to leave the information in the comments section below. Uh, I've been kind of busy in my stores lately. I've been selling a lot of cameras. Uh, thank you guys very much who have bought cameras from me. I am working this weekend to get a lot more things uh, listed and ready to go. So um, uh, if you're shopping for a vintage camera like one of these here, uh, please check out my stores. I've got links to my stores posted in the description below the video. And it's getting late. I've got more stuff to do. I've got some packages to send out and cameras to work on and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, end the video here shortly. If you'd like to see more videos, and I plan to be doing more of these as I get more cameras to, uh, to share with you, uh, please subscribe. Uh, if you like the video, please click the like button. That helps a lot. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you tune in again soon.